Well, good morning, everybody. Who's ready to worship today? Several of you. Perfect. Come on, stand on up, and we're going to open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your presence is here and that your presence is filling this place. Lord, we thank you that you love us so much that you not only sent your son who gave his life for us, your son returned to the Father, and he sent the Spirit to fill us and to flow in us and to help us to experience you in this lifetime, God. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for all you've done. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here in your mighty name. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind? of weight it was my tomb till I met I was breathing but not alive oh my failures I tried to hide it was my doom till I met you. Called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb and 
desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul your work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the God of ages stepped down from glory and where my sin and bear my shame. God has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my sing that one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ. My living hope, Jesus Christ, 
clap it's okay <laughs> one clapper all right <laughs> hey this week as i was preparing for this service i was reminded i just it came to my heart and my mind of how this how jesus came and he gave his life for us and and that's an important part of who we are and a part on the central thing to our identity but we're not just christ centered we're also spirit led right and Jesus said when he was talking to the disciples, I'm going to send another. And that other, that one, is going to be your comforter. He's going to be your teacher. He's going to be the one that guides you into all truth. He's going to be the presence of God available to each and every one of us. And Jesus, of course, was speaking about the Holy Spirit. And I don't know about you, but I'm just finding myself in a place every day where I need to be more and more led by the Holy Spirit. Do you? Do you feel that? Do you sense that? And I have good news for you. The Holy Spirit wants to lead you. Jesus sent him for that purpose. And part of learning to be led by the Spirit is learning to experience the presence of God through the Holy Spirit. So as we sing this last song, you know, some of you come from good Pentecostal backgrounds and some of you come from good Baptist backgrounds or Lutheran backgrounds or no church backgrounds. So depending on where you came from in your history, this might feel weird to you, but as, you, as we worship, if you can just raise your hands and say, Holy Spirit, pour on me. Fill me up so I can go out and do what you've called me to do. If you make yourself a vessel that God will work through, he'll pour the Holy Spirit in and around you. It's not unusual to experience the presence of God through the Holy Spirit. And we should be desiring to do that more and more every day. Amen? become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence
nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Let's sing that verse again. There's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord, I've tasted and seen. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of love, when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. In your presence, Lord, the Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence, Lord. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord, oh, and worship you. Lord, we just ask for your sweet presence to just be here, Lord. Oh, God, may it cause a wonderful peace and an eternal joy to just bring up in our hearts because we know that you're right here with us. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you allow us to be in your presence and just enjoy it here today. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we worship you because of how great and how kind you are. We worship you because you allow us times like this when your spirit can just come in and flood our heart. Oh God, and all the turmoils of this world can just be set aside because we're in your presence. We have you, and that's what really matters. Thank you for that, Jesus. Oh, Lord, Jesus, I just pray that before we leave this place and when we leave this place today, we may be able just to take your presence right along with us and know, God, that you're just with us everywhere we go because you're our God and you love to be with your people. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, may we just constantly have in our mind and our memories the wonderful times when your presence just came into our hearts and all of our problems fled. God, might we live in that day and night to know that our trust and our reliance is completely on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, Jesus, for your wonderful grace, your wonderful grace you just give to us. Praise your name this morning, Lord. We worship you. We just worship you, Lord. Oh, God, we pray that we might just be able to continue in this worship as our as our service continues on, Lord. But we pray, God, we might just re remain in that presence and let you just continue to speak into our heart your love and your grace, for truly we need that today. Here today, Lord, we declare that we are a people that really need you because without you, we're in trouble. We really need you in our life, Jesus, in every area of it. Oh, God, may we just freely let you in and freely let you work in all the parts of our lives. Thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we just pray your blessing and just continue on this service. May this day be a day in which we can mark down as a day that we've met God. And you've spoken to us. And we've listened. Thank you for that, Jesus. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Sixty-six million children across the developing world attend school hungry. But together, we could end child hunger if only one out of every five people in the United States committed to feeding one child a year. Anyone can help end hunger through Feed One. Feed One uses nutritious meals as the doorway to providing an education, healthier living environment, clean water, and most importantly, hope. Today, Convoy of Hope is feeding more than 177,000 children in 11 different countries. But there is still more work to be done. By partnering with churches, businesses, universities, and people like you, Feed One can continue to eradicate hunger one child at a time. Every $10 feeds a child for an entire month. As Mother Teresa said, if you can't feed 100, then just feed one. Make a difference. Feed one today. All right. Well, we get to make a, a difference. Last week, we handed out packets, and Mike, you have those available yet again. I noticed when I filled mine out, there was no return address to send it. And so I looked that up, and now there's a sticker on these things. If you'd like one of these, go ahead and raise your hand. And uh, if you want to, you can fill it out today. Use your credit card or your debit card. A monthly charge of $10 per child will come off there. And I'll send yours in along with mine. One person already did that last week. This is uh, the last week we're going to really emphasize that. And then I'm going to ask Jerry Walteri to come and hand out bulletins. If I thought I saw Jerry. Where did I see him? Jerry, did I see you? There you are. And uh, so if you didn't get a bulletin, yeah, my, my son's called me Slow Steppin' Wally because I'm slow, so it's all good. Here you go. If you'd like a bulletin as Jerry passes by, go ahead and let him know. He'll be glad to give you that. After our service today, we are having our annual business meeting celebration. That's going to start at 1130, and we hope to have you out of here and done for a late lunch uh, at 1 o'clock, and so keep that in mind. 
A new study is starting next Sunday morning, a shepherd's look at Psalm 23. Kim Kaftan will be leading that study. You can pick up books from her or just show up next Sunday morning down in the hospitality room downstairs, and she will have books available for you. And then the first weekend in March, there is a kids' convention happening in Helena, and there's information out in the foyer about that. Or you can talk to our children's pastor, Pastor Hannah, and she will give you all the details. All right, let's stand up this morning, greet one another if you would. And children, you may head off to Kids Church, and I'm just going to talk to our online congregation for a little bit while you guys are spending time together. Well, good morning, online church. It's such a pleasure of mine to greet you this morning. Now, just so you know, that annual business meeting celebration will not be live streamed. And so we hope that as many of you that are members of this local church can come and be a part of that, that would be so awesome. But um, it's so good to be together. And I wonder how many of you are, are beginning to find fellowship right where you're at, either in your home, with your family, with others. No matter how you gather together, whether it's on Facebook or in different groups or you just have a small group of people, uh, I've heard it referred to as my, my COVID circle. I'm not sure I like that, that term, but it is important for us to have just a, a small network of people that are looking out for us and we are looking out for them. So if you're needing help with that, uh, please get a hold of us. We do want to connect with you in any way that we can. We love and appreciate all of you that are tuned in, viewing this morning. May the Lord bless you as we continue on in the service. All right, you may be seated this morning. As we get into this morning's topic... Have a seat. I am so glad that you are here this morning. And some of you are brand new guests with us. And we just want you to know that if you're a guest today, we really only want you to feel like a guest only one day. And then after that, we hope you feel a, a real part of what's going on. There is one Sunday of each year that I do a, something a little bit different in the arena of preaching, and I call it annually the State of the Church Address. Now, as you've come this morning, I hope you did not expect something similar to the State of the Nation or the Union Address, because I'm not doing that. I hope that you did not come looking for a State of the State Address, because I'm not doing that either. But how many of you know we need to know what is the State of this local church where we live and how is Jesus being glorified and how is the kingdom of God being expanded by this local group of people. So we want to do that today and we're going to start by looking back at 2020. How many of you have uh, heard that saying that hindsight is 2020? I'm seeing that all over the place. Used to hear it before and now we hear it more and more all the time. But let's take a few moments and look back at this year and make some observations. As we began this year, we had our Acts 2 journey. This was something that our leadership was doing. We had our third retreat in January, and we started doing our homework, and we were strategically planning how to effectively communicate and in implement our vision statement, our core values, definitions for our church. Oh, we were getting so excited. This was going to be something we, we were going to do for the next two to three years. Boy, we didn't know what was going to happen soon. So to get started with that process, I preached a series of sermons communicating our church's mission statement as well as our vision statement, all those types of things. I started that on January 5th. And 12th, talking about our mission statement. Pretty easy. Loving God and loving one another more, proclaiming Jesus Christ to our world. How many of you know that's never going to change? That's our mission. We are going to do that. We might find different ways to do that, 
But that is our goal. That is what we as a church, we as God's people, that's what we're about. Well, on January 26th, I introduced our church's vision statement. And through the month of February, I preached one phrase at a time of that vision statement. Hopefully, some of you still remember it. Creating opportunities for who? Everyone to what? Experience, and what do we want them to experience? A lifelong journey with Christ. That's our vision statement. We committed ourselves to it the end of January through the month of February. We're, oh boy, we're getting excited. And then came the month of March. And so in March, we decided we're going to preach through our five core values. Worship, connect, disciple, serve, reach out. And right in the middle of that series, you remember what happened? (laughs) Yep. I'll never forget Friday, March 13th. That's when the worldwide pandemic, COVID-19, hit the state of Montana hard. How do I know this so well? Because I remember I was down in Billings at the Metra, and I had just finished watching our Haver Blue Pony girls get beat in overtime by the Billings Central Rams, and I was so mad. I was so frustrated. I was so angry, and I was uh, between games, I would always be walking around that metro. And I think I walked double time because I was, my dad says I take big steps when I'm angry or upset. And I think I made like double the amount of rounds and I'm walking around and there's another game fixing to happen. All of a sudden the announcement comes, don't bother coming back to the metro tomorrow, go home. Because all of the games have been canceled due to COVID-19. And I remember coming home the next day. I remember meeting with Pastor Jamie and talking to Pastor George and talking to others. See, I came home and we, the pastoral staff, we had to quickly figure out how were we going to have church when nobody could come to the building. And not only that Sunday, the 15th, a day later, but we would end up doing that for six Sundays. Did we know what we were doing? Absolutely not. We did not know what we were doing. But how many of you know we serve a God who knows what he's doing? And if we submit to him as God's people, he will show us what we need to be doing. And so we began to submit ourselves to the Lord and say, how do we do this? We don't know. We don't know. So we began, with the Lord's help, figuring it out. And it was interesting because right about that time, both Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday fell within the parameters of those six Sundays that we couldn't meet together physically in this building. And so those sermons were online only. I can remember on Thursday nights, the worship team would come and we would pre-record the worship time. Then they would all disappear out those doors, out in the foyer, and they'd be hanging around and talking, and I would be in here with two cameras, preaching, trying to preach my sermon like all of you were here. Well, I must have done okay, because during that time, I was calling my mom and dad, and I wanted to talk to my dad about something. He had had an appointment in Billings, and I wanted to see how he was doing, and so I called the house, and mom answers the phone and said, hey, can I talk to dad? I just want to check and see how he's doing. And my mom says, Greggy, she's the only one that calls him that, Greggy, come to the phone. Your televangelist son is on the phone. <laughs> and I got on the phone, and I said, dad, what is that all about? And he kind of got quiet. I said, dad, what is that all about? He goes, well... Son, I've been watching you online, because that's the only way we can do this. He goes, you know what? You're better online than you are in person. (laughs) I said, Dad, what, what are you talking about? He goes, son, when you're in that room and you're only talking to that camera, those of us that are watching, you're talking to us the whole time. See, 
when you guys are here, I got to share eye time with you and them. But when you all weren't here, guess what? It was just me and them. He goes, man, it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I love it or not, Dad, but uh, thanks for sharing. <laughs> well, it wasn't long after that. We had Palm Sunday, Easter Sunday. We started a new, new sermon series. It's the longest sermon series I think I've ever preached in my life. And it was based on the material that we distributed the week after Easter called The Story. How many of you remember somebody coming by your house and dropping books off and prepackaged communion elements? That was quite an undertaking. We had to have a team to be able to do that. We did that several times through the next couple of months. And so we preached through the Old Testament from April 19th to September 6th. You see the titles of the different messages. It might... Uh, stir up your memory. And then after that, we did the New Testament from September 20th all the way through the end of the year. I don't know about you, but uh, I got kind of tired of being six foot away from everybody. Any of you? I don't like that so much. Um, I'm so thankful to my wife for making me this mask. You've seen it on me a lot. I carry it around all the time. I love it, and I can't stand it. Um, I agree. (laughs) I love it because you need it to get into places and and to do things. But um, try and speak with it on. Try and sing with it on. Try and do just about anything with it on. Do not eat with it on. I found that it's not, uh, not good. But we had to learn how to do those things. And it, and it wasn't easy because on April 26th, we were able to resume services in this building. And I thought for sure, everybody's going to come back. It's going to be so great. And that first Sunday, 31 people showed up. I'm like, "Uh uh-oh, what happened? We used to run an average of 158 people in this building on any given Sunday. 31? how long is it going to take us to get back to where we were? Well, can I tell you, we're still not there. Last week was the most we've ever had since Corona hit. We had 139 of you in the building. That's still not 158 where we were before, and that was an average. But is that okay? Yeah, it's okay, because something else happened. In March of 2020, we started to keep track of some new to us numbers, attendance numbers, like how many people were watching on our telephone app? How many people were joining us via YouTube? How many people were joining us through Facebook watch-throughs, online interactive? How many people were reached? I was walking down the care center hall. That was when I was allowed to be in there. And I have my mask on, all my stuff on. This lady's coming up. She goes, I know you. I know you. I'm like, yeah, I'm Chaplain Curtis. She goes, no, I know. I've I've seen you. I've seen you somewhere. And she's walking, and she walked past me, and then she got three steps past me. She goes, I know what it is. You keep showing up on my Facebook. You have an ad on there, don't you? I said, well, our, our, our church does. She says, you're on there. I said, yeah, I'm going to have to talk to Jamie about that. Uh, <laughs> do you realize there's a whole lot of people in the last 11 months that have been joining us that you don't know them yet? I don't know them yet, but they know us. And more importantly, they've been introduced to Jesus. They've been introduced to a God who loves them and cares about them. They've been introduced to a community of people that care and are tuned into God and know that God can meet the needs of everyday people. Amen? So, attendance numbers, way, way different. On an average, if you start to include some of those numbers, plus the people that are here, every Sunday up through August, and it's more now, but these are numbers from up through August of last year, March through August, average of 230. 
people reached. And I want you to keep in mind, that does not count if you're part of Haver Assembly family and you watch, you're not in that number. If you follow our Facebook page, you're not in that number. So all of those people, which probably is easily another 100, we're talking about 330 people reached every week. Not just they saw an ad, they actually watched through it, they join us for service. Well, what, what does that do? Well, we're gonna talk more about that later. You have to pastor differently. You have to operate differently because for every one of you here, guess what? There's two of you that are right there. And we pastor all of you, which is kind of exciting. Wow, what has happened during this global pandemic is that Haver Assembly has reached more people than ever before with the life-changing power of Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen on that? We haven't gone backwards. Not one moment did we ever take a step backwards. We've only plowed forward in the name of Jesus Christ. And guess what? We pledge to continue to do that. Now, some of our goals before we were aware of this pandemic were that we would have at least two Sundays where we'd have over 200 people in this building. Did that happen? No. But we exploded that goal in people attending. They just weren't in this building. Wow. There were other things we wanted to happen. We couldn't count them. We wanted to see at least 10 people born again into the kingdom of God, baptized in water and serving the Lord. Very hard to, to measure that. We weren't able to keep track of that. We were only able to keep track of some attendance numbers and some internet numbers. But you know what? God is pleased because you do everything that you can do and you trust him to take care of all the rest. Amen? And he does. He always does. We've made great strides in 2020 to make the appearance and the sound of our online services better and better, which equates to it better sounding in here too. Changes have included a redesign of the sanctuary stage. Did you notice that? Cameras, lights, purchased, positioned. Before this pandemic ever even hit us, we had already decided that we were going to make some intentional changes in our church environment to reach out to unchurched, underchurched people in our area and to purposely reach out to our family, our friends, our neighbors who need a closer relationship through Jesus Christ our Lord. We were going to make these changes Anyway, how many of you know the pandemic just made it even more important to do so? But we were already headed down this track. Well, that's a look back at 2020, but I've had enough of looking back. Are you ready to look forward? Yeah. What's 2021 going to look like? Well, before I get to any of this, because all of this could be nothing if Jesus shows up to pick us up today. One thing we want to always keep in mind is that at any time, the Lord Jesus Christ could split the clouds and come pick up his church. And I don't know about you, but I want to be ready. I want to be looking. I want to have my heart ready. I want to be anticipating the coming of the Lord Jesus. Now, some people think that's only for older people. But I'm going to be honest with you, I've been excited about Jesus coming back ever since I was a young man. I remember telling my friends when I was 16 years old as a sophomore in high school, one of these days, hopefully in my lifetime, Jesus is going to come and I'm going to be ready and I'm okay if it happens today. I hadn't been to senior prom yet. I hadn't got married yet. Hadn't had kids yet. There were a lot of things I hadn't experienced, but you know what? I was ready to give all that up to experience Jesus and experience heaven. Doesn't matter what age you are. How many of you know you can have a healthy expectation of Jesus coming and being ready to meet him no matter how old or how young you are? Amen? So these goals are if he tarries for a little bit. Everyone understand that? 
His coming trumps everything. But this is what would happen if he doesn't come right away. During this year, I wanted to preach three sermon series. The first one is activating the power of God's word during the months of February through June. How many of you realize that this word is powerful? Extremely powerful. It's the most powerful book ever written. That'll never change. But sometimes I think the people of God, we we struggle with how to activate the power of this word in our lives. And we're going to spend some time the next couple months really diving into that, learning how to do it. Um, You're going to, over the next couple of months, you're going to have to get verbal in church. We're going to practice praying the word of God, speaking the word of God out loud. Do you realize that makes a difference? I'm going to convince you of that this next month. That's my goal, the month of February, is just to spend some time convincing you that the spoken word of God changes things. And so we're going to do that. The second series is called Anxious for Nothing during the summer months. Have you realized that there's been a lot of anxious people? I had someone just call me earlier this week and said, Pastor, I'm so anxious. I'm anxious about... Uh, the election results. I'm anxious about our country. I'm anxious about, and they just had a whole list of things they were anxious about. And I said, you're probably not going to like what I have to say, but the Apostle Paul tells us to be anxious for nothing. What do you think I told you all these things for? Uh, Hopefully so you could stop being anxious about them. Now let's pray and ask the Lord to help you to cast all your cares on Jesus and not spend a whole lot of time being anxious and worrying. Do you realize that anxiety and worry never help us? They will never help you. You say, well, if I'm a responsible person, I'll be anxious and I'll be worried. No, that's an ungodly, sinful person. Come on. Boy, that that was weak. I know why it's weak, because anxiety and worry is kind of our go-to. But as believers, can I tell you, that does not have to be our go-to. We don't have to be anxious, and we don't have to worry, but we do need to learn how to pray. We do need to learn how to turn to our God and know that our God hears us, and our God is powerful enough to keep us and sustain us and help us. Amen? That's what we need to learn how to do. Cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Well, that's a little foretaste of that sermon series. The third one is hearing the Holy Spirit speak. Pastor Jamie mentioned the person and work of the Holy Spirit during our worship time. I meet so many people, and he talked about different backgrounds, a Pentecostal background or a Baptist background or no background. That was kind of interesting. No matter what your background is, can I tell you, that the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. And it's not based on your background. It's, that has something to do with it, but it's not based on that. It's based on your openness to him and your ability to hear his voice. And that can get better. And we're going to spend some time at the end of this year during the months of October through December honing our skills of how to hear the Holy Spirit and how to let the Holy Spirit minister through us. Well, Easter's on April 4th this year, and uh, this last year, Michael Anderson, which by the way, when he came back, I didn't even recognize him. You did your hair different, and you had facial hair, and I'm like, who's that young buck back there? And then Jamie said, that's Michael Anderson. I said, no way, that's not him. Yeah, it is. Uh, One thing Michael and Joanna liked or loved was the outdoor service that we had out in our parking lot and underneath the trees. How many of you were able to be there? Yeah. You know what? There's one family that's here. That was their first time. They were invited by another family. Both of those families are here this morning. And then they kept coming. I love it when they keep coming. It's so good. Michael, should we have a few more outdoor services, you think? Maybe more than just one this summer? So we're going to kind of work on that because for whatever reason, I think they're easier to invite friends to. 
You bring your lawn chairs, you bring snacks if you want to, and you just sit out there together. So we're hoping to do a little bit more of that this year, and I think that'll be a lot of fun. We have some missionaries that have come already. How many of you remember meeting Judith Grace Anderson? Wasn't she fun? For those of you that were viewing online, she had such dark clothes on that the only things you could see were her face and her hands. You probably wonder, hey, pastor always wears light clothes. I learned that from her. I'm like, I am not wearing black pants. I am not wearing dark stuff because I don't want to be a mime because that would not be good. Um, So, you know, you're learning all the time. And then we had Steve Fry a few weeks ago. How many of you remember him? Where are you from? You remember the message? I'm from heaven. He talked about our citizenship being ahead. And well, we've got some other missionaries coming. Jonathan and Audra Delgetti. How many of you knew David or Dave Delgetti? Okay, this is his boy. This is his son and his wife. They'll be coming. And then we also have Troy and Ashley King coming in April. That'll be fun. That'll be the week after Easter. So just a lot. And then we have a lady missionary coming on Mother's Day, May 9th. I love having missionaries come. I love to invest in the lives of our missionary families. It's so good. And then, of course, there's our annual Rotary Campground, our our church camp out. And uh, Andy Morris, I always think of you when I think of this. So you were like the first person I told after the staff that we got that weekend secure in June. Because... I can't remember how many years ago it was, but I was walking around, and Andy's out at the fire, and he makes really good food over a campfire. Not everybody has that skill. I do not, even under a good fire, do not have that skill. And I remember, Andy, you were making food, and you said, hey, pastor, you want a plate of food? Oh, it was so delicious. I'm like, this is so good. How does he do this? But we're going to have fun at the Rotary Campground. And then... Later on, that month of June, we're hoping to have Kyle Winkler come and share in meetings the week right before family camp. And wouldn't it be nice to be able to go to family camp and actually go there this year and not have to do it virtual? I was talking to uh, Irene earlier in her Sunday school class. I said, you know, our our mantra this year is we're going to do it. We just have to figure out how because we're tired of canceling everything. And so that's what we're really trying to do this next year is we're going to do it. We just have to figure out how to do it. And so that's our pledge to you. We're going to do that. Well, there's some events coming up. Kids Conference coming up in March. Pastor Hannah's talking a lot about that these days. And then our teen camps during the summer. It's going to be a lot of fun. As we look forward to 2021... We hope to finish this Acts 2 journey we never got to retreat for. I haven't forgotten about it. We still need to do it. So leadership, I don't know when that's going to happen, but we're going to look for that to happen. To renew our vision statement and our core values, I preached them on the two Sundays prior to this Sunday. You may remember core values last week, vision statement the week before. You know, we were even going to have a 90th birthday celebration. Anybody remember something like that? That got canceled too. Well, we're hoping that we can do something in September of this year that'll work. What about our goals? As we continue to intentionally make changes in our church to reach out to unchurched and underchurched people in our area, and we continue to purposely reach out to our family, our friends, and neighbors who need a closer relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I do believe that this next year, 2021, we could eventually have at least two Sundays in which we have over 200 people here without blue tape. Amen? We were at 139 last week. I don't see any reason why we can't continue to grow, even in the midst of whatever's going to come. We just have to figure out how to do it. You say, well, will we go back to two services? 
Yeah, if we start getting those kind of numbers, we'll have to. How many of you know that 200 won't fit in here comfortably? We could pack you in here, but then everybody would wear a mask and that wouldn't work. So we'll figure this out. We will figure it out. Wouldn't it be great if we could see at least 10 people born again this year, baptized in water, and serving Jesus as a disciple of his? You think that could happen? I believe it could happen. We pledge ourselves to that. I believe that Haver Assembly Online will continue to grow, and it will gain momentum and followers along the way. I've had people ask me, Pastor, when are things going to return to normal? Don't bother asking me that question anymore, because I don't even think it's a valid question. Because normal has changed. Normal is not ever going to be like it was prior to March. I just don't believe that that's going to come back. So I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for what does God want to do now? Because now that we've gotten started this way, how many of you realize that our online congregation, we can't drop them? Hello? They're with us. They're part of us. They're just not in this building, but they're following and they're watching and they're paying attention. Do we need to continue to provide church services for them, absolutely. Do we need to continue to provide church services for y'all? Of course. And everybody else that the Lord adds to the family of God. We have to do it. We're pledged to do that and to do that very, very well. What about dinner church? Anybody remember somebody mentioned something about that? We had it planned. We had it planned, Rick. Our first one was going to be in March. We're going to do Nick at night and talk about Nicodemus. And we had the cooks. We had everything right there. And then March 13th hit. And we all got sent home from basketball. And you couldn't do anything with food. So there went dinner church. Dinner church might come back. In fact, dinner church has kind of already come back for one little group of people. You know who they are? The young adults gathering. The young adults gathering that happens twice a month, those people age 18 through 30, you know what they're doing when they get together? They're doing dinner church. They eat together. They talk. Now they're studying the Bible. I'm not leading the Bible study. They're leading it at their tables. They're studying the book of Jonah. They're hanging out. They do the Bible study together. Uh, then usually there's some kind of a mixture or a game that gets them to know each other better so they learn who each other is and build relationships. And then they close the night and they pray for each other. How many of you know that's dinner church? And they're inviting their friends. They're inviting people that haven't been there before. Uh, can I just tell you a success story for them? They started with six of them. They grew to nine. The third one, they had 13. The fourth one, they went back down to nine. And then this last one, they were up to 16. How many know that from six to 16? That's huge growth. That's a lot of growth. And I don't think they're taking a step backwards. Every time they get together, they're talking about, who can I invite? Who might really enjoy this type of a, an environment? And they're thinking and they're praying about that. I'm proud of our young adults in what they're doing. They're kind of pioneering a little bit this dinner church idea for us. But there's some other ideas on the, on the burner too. How about this idea of a car and motorcycle show? Anybody remember us talking about that? There were a few people. Some are here this morning, some not here. They're probably watching. They're like, Pastor, I so wanted to do that. I so wanted to be a part of that. Well, we haven't given up on it. It's just a year later, like a lot of things. 
And we're still thinking up different ways that we can reach people. Well, as we march into this year, the three things I'm really hoping and praying that you'll get a hold of this year are number one, that you will learn how to activate the power of God's word, the Bible in your life better than ever before. That this book is going to find a passageway through your lips and change your life. And not only your life, it'll change somebody else's. Do you know as your pastor when I have the most success in life change in people's lives? It's when I can help get this into the heart of a person. That's when it's successful. Every time. Every time. You say, well, is being kind part of it? Of course. Being loving part of it? Yes. Providing for needs? Yes. That's all part of it. Those are all pathways for the word to get in. The second area I would love to see us grow in, I think we need to learn how to be anxious for nothing. I think we need to learn how to take our cares to Jesus. I really believe we need to learn how to pray. How to pray and how to pray one for another. One thing I, I've noticed about the young adults at the last gathering, at the end, we, they got partnered up in duos, two gals together, two guys together. And the assignment was share a need, pray for each other. Can I tell you, some of these people have never prayed out loud, ever, like ever before. And they're being asked to do something that's way, totally and completely out of their comfort zone. But all I said to him was, hey, you don't have to wax eloquent. Whatever that person just told you is a need, speak it out and say, Jesus, help them. That's a prayer. How many know Jesus hears that prayer? He's not looking for fancy words. He's looking for people that need him. And he always shows up when there's need for him. So they're learning to pray one for another. And then lastly, that we could better learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. How are lives going to be changed? Your life and my life is changed through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. How are other people's lives changed? Through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. God tabernacles in us. Amen? This is not something that's totally owned by Pentecostals. It's, it's not something that's totally owned by Assembly of God. How many of you know the Holy Spirit's not owned by anybody? He goes wherever he wants, and he does whatever he wants. Our choice is, are we going to cooperate with him, find out what he's doing, and be involved with what he's doing? And I say, yes, we will. Amen? Would you stand this morning? If you want to hear more specifics about how this may all look in this next year, this is a little teaser, and I admit it. Come to the annual business meeting celebration. We're going to go light on the meeting and heavy on the celebration. And we hope that you'll join us. Pastor Jamie and the team are going to lead us in a closing song as we march into 2021 together. God is good, amen? You know, something that, two things that are always true. It was true in 2020, and it will be true in 2021, and it will probably continue to be true in the future. Jesus said, in this life, you will have troubles. 2020 was full of them, weren't they? <laughs> Wasn't it? Like, there was all sorts of things that went wrong, that went to skew, that didn't go according to plan. Same thing is going to be true in 2021. It might not be the same troubles, but they've kind of carried over. And the, you know what? It will present its new problems, new, new blocks, new things that step in our way as we go. But this is also true. Jesus said, there will be trouble, trouble, but he also said, I will overcome the world. Amen? 
where there's obstacles, there are opportunities. And those opportunities are places where God shows himself to be faithful. That was true in 2020. And how many of you know that God will continue to be faithful in 2021? Amen? We're going to sing. We're going to sing a song that just kind of tells us that. my life you have been faithful oh my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God sing that again church all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that i am able i will see of the goodness of god Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I've surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness God, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah, Lord God, we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Lord, go with us this day, we pray in your mighty name. Amen. You may be dismissed.